Welcome back viewers. In today's session, we will be discussing about the lymphatic drainage of the upper limb. And uh, we will be discussing about the axillary lymph nodes in detail. So, how is the lymphatic drainage of the upper limb done? There are two different types of lymphatics. You have got superficial lymphatics and you have got deep, group, deep lymphatics. So, superficial lymphatics which are there, they will be present in the superficial fascia. Superficial lymphatics, they will be present in the superficial fascia and these will accompany the veins. These will accompany the veins. These will be traveling along in the direction along with the veins. Now what about the deep group of lymphatics? Deep group of lymphatics, they lie deep to the deep fascia. They lie deep to the deep fascia and these travel along with the arteries. Okay. So that is how we divide. In the upper limb, we have got a superficial uh, lymphatic group and a deep lymphatic group. The superficial group will lie in the superficial fascia and those will travel along with the veins. They will travel along the veins. The deep lymphatics, they are present deep to the deep fascia and they will travel along with the arteries. So that is how we are differentiating the superficial and deep. Now, what are all the superficial group of lymphatics which are draining the upper limb? So we will uh, discuss the superficial group first. So, we will start the description from the hand. Hand to the forearm, forearm and to the arm. And uh, that is how it goes. So, we are uh, starting off with the hand. In the hand, there are two different plexus. So, this is the dorsum of the hand and this is the palmar aspect of the hand. So, you have got a dorsal plexus on the dorsum of the hand and you have got a palmar plexus. So, there are two different superficial plexuses in the hand. So, one in the dorsum which we are calling as dorsal plexus and another one in the palm which we are calling it as the palmar plexus. Now, this dorsal plexus which is there, it will receive the lymph from the digits as well. It will receive the lymph from the digits and from the palm also the lymphatics will pass through the dorsum by means of the communication at the webs of the fingers. So, this is what we call as the web of the finger. So, there is a communication between the dorsal and palmar plexus through the webs of the fingers. There are communicating channels. So, uh, the dorsal plexus will receive all the limb from the dorsum of the hand. Okay. And from the digits and partly from the palmar plexus through its communication. Palmar plexus will drain all the limb from the palmar aspect of the hand. Now what will happen after this? So we have got two veins in the upper limb. Okay. So I told you the superficial group of lymphatics, they will be accompanying the veins. So this is the lateral aspect of the hand and this is the medial aspect of the hand. Along the lateral aspect, you have got the cephalic vein and along the medial aspect, you have got the basilic vein. Now, these two plexuses, after carrying the limb, uh, after collecting the limb, they will travel along the basilic vein and cephalic vein. Okay. So, from the medial part, they will travel along the basilic vein and from the lateral part, they will travel along the cephalic vein. So, if, if this is the and so here you will have the cephalic vein, here you will have the basilic vein. So the lymphatics from the hand are uh, traveling along the basilic vein and along the cephalic vein. Now what will happen after that? So this medial one is the basilic and lateral one is the cephalic. Okay. So what will happen after that? So, the medial, medial three fingers, medial three fingers, okay, medial half of the hand, 
median half of forearm and median half of the arm. All these lymphatics, all the medial group, medial group, this medial group, they will travel along the territory of the basilic vein and in between, in between they are intercepted by supra trochlear group of lymph nodes. So that means from the medial half of the hand and forearm, the limb which is getting collected is uh, getting uh, collected by this supratrochlear group of lymph nodes which are present near the elbow, elbow, okay. Then from the supratrochlear, so how do we actually uh, uh, tell is afferents and efferents, okay. Afferents and efferents. So those which enter a group of lymph node is what we call as afferents. Those which leave the lymph node is what we call it as efferent. So the supratrochlear group of lymph nodes, they, refer, uh, they receive the afferents from the median half of the uh, hand and forearm. And efferents from the supratrochlear group of lymph nodes, they will drain into this lateral group of lymph nodes lateral group of lymph nodes that is lateral group of axillary lymph nodes okay so that is about the medial half of the upper limb next coming to the lateral half of the upper limb so, we have discussed about the medial three fingers, but what about the lateral two fingers and the lateral part of the upper limb? So, from the lateral two fingers, that is the thumb and your index finger and the lateral half of the forearm and lateral half of the arm, the lymph is carried by these lymph nodes along the distribution of this cephalic vein. They travel along the territory, uh, territory of this cephalic vein and then they will reach the infraclavicular group of lymph nodes. Infraclavicular group of lymph nodes. From the infraclavicular group of lymph nodes, they will drain into the apical group of axillary lymph nodes after piercing the clavi pectoral fascia. Okay. So, the lymphatics which accompany the cephalic vein will drain into the infraclavicular group of lymph nodes and from there they will drain into the apical group of axillary lymph nodes. So, that is about the lateral part of the upper limb. Okay, I will just write it down. Lateral part of the upper limb. They drain into the infraclavicular group. From there, after piercing the clavi pectoral fascia, they will drain into the apical group of axillary lymph nodes. So that is about the lateral aspect. Now that we have seen the superficial group, uh, we will see what happens to the deep group of lymphatics of the upper limb. So, the deep group, as I told you, it travels along the arteries. It is present deep to the deep fascia and it is traveling along the course of the arteries. Radial artery, ulnar artery and the brachial artery. So, the deep group of lymphatics, they will communicate with the superficial group of lymphatics at different levels and they will finally drain into the lateral group of axillary lymph nodes. Lateral group of axillary lymph nodes. Okay. So that is about the deep lymphatics of the upper limb. So with this we will uh, move on to the axillary lymph nodes. Now we will be discussing the axillary group of lymph nodes in detail because it is one of the question for you.
axillary lymph nodes. So as the name suggests, these lymph nodes, they are present in the boundaries of the axilla. Okay, so that is why they are called as axillary lymph nodes. They are present in the axilla. And basing on their location, they are divided into five different groups. Anterior group, posterior group, lateral group, uh, central group, Apical group. Apical group. So, these axillary lymph nodes which are there, they are 20 to 30 in number. 20 to 30 in number. So, what are all the areas which are drained by this axillary lymph nodes? The areas drained by this axillary lymph nodes is the mammary gland. Then, the cutaneous lymphatics of the trunk above the level of umbilicus. Above the umbilicus. And the upper limb. So these are the areas which are being drained by these axillary group of lymph nodes. Now we will see in detail about each group. So I told you there are 5 divided into 5 basing on the location in the axilla. So here is the anterior group of lymph nodes. Anterior group of lymph nodes. These are the posterior group of lymph nodes. And these are the lateral group of lymph nodes. This is the epical. Sorry. So this is the central group of lymph nodes. And this is the epical. So how are they given the names? Axilla is actually located like this, you know. So, this is the anterior wall in which the anterior group is present. This is the posterior wall where the posterior group is present. In the lateral wall, you have got the lateral group and at the base, you have got the central group and the apex, apex, you have got the epical group. So, that is how they are given their names. So, anterior group. This is the anterior group anterior group so i told you superficial lymphatics they travel along the veins they are in close proximity to the veins so this is the axillary vein and these are its tributaries around which the axillary lymph nodes are located so anterior group this is the anterior group it is otherwise called as pectoral group why it is called as pectoral group is it is present just below the pectoralis minor muscle. This is the pectoralis minor muscle. So because it is present below the pectoralis minor it is also called as pectoral group. And because it is located in the anterior wall of the axilla, we are calling it as the anterior group. So from where does it get its afferents? So anterior group will receive afferents from the Mammary gland. Entire mammary gland. Okay. So, this is the area from which it will receive its afferents. Next, coming to the posterior group. So, uh, and one more thing. This anterior group, it is present along the lateral thoracic vein, which is a tributary of the axillary vein. It is present along the Lateral thoracic vein. Next coming to the posterior group. This is the posterior group. Posterior group. This is present along the subscapular vein. And it is present in the posterior wall of the axilla on the subscapularis muscle. So this posterior group otherwise is also called as subscapular group. Subscapular group. Okay. So the afferents to this posterior group of lymphatics will come from the posterior part of the body wall up to the level of iliac crest. Iliac crest. So the posterior part of the body wall 
is drained by this posterior group of lymph nodes. Next, coming to the lateral group. So, this is the lateral group of lymphatics. They are present posteromedial to the axillary vein. This is the axillary vein. They are present posterior and medial, medial to the axillary vein. So, they are present in the lateral wall of the axilla. They are present in the lateral wall of the axilla and they are present posteromedial to the axillary vein. So, the afferents to this lateral group of lymph nodes, they come from the upper limb except those which accompany the cephalic vein. So, that means we have discussed in the earlier session that Medial three fingers, medial half of the forearm and arm after uh, passing through the supratrochlear group, they drain into the lateral group of lymph nodes. So, uh, only that part is received by this lateral group. But the lateral uh, two fingers and the lateral half of the forearm, they travel along the cephalic vein and they enter into the infraclavicular and they drain into the apical group of lymph nodes. So, that is why we say the entire upper lip except those which accompany the cephalic vein are being drained by this lateral group of lymph nodes. Okay. Next coming to the central group of lymph nodes. So here you have got the central group of lymph nodes. These are located in the base of the axilla. These are located in the base of the axilla and this will receive its afferents from these three groups. So we have seen these are receiving afferents from the mammary gland. This is referring, uh, it is receiving its afferents from the body wall and this is receiving its afferents from the entire upper limb except those accompanying the cephalic vein. From these three groups, the efferents will go to this central group. Okay. So from the anterior posterior and lateral groups the lymph which is collected is now going to the central group central group okay from the central group it will go to the apical group it will go to the apical group so this is present in the base of the axilla and it will receive its afferents from the these three anterior posterior and lateral groups so this central group of lymph nodes which are there, they are generally pierced by one nerve. Now, which is called as intercostobrachial nerve. Intercostobrachial nerve. So, when there is enlargement of these lymph nodes, there can be a compression on this nerve which will lead to pain along the medial most part of the forearm which is being supplied by this intercostobrachial nerve. Okay, so that is the applied importance. Next, coming to the apical group. This is the apical group. This apical group, it is located in the apex of the axilla. It is located in the apex of the axilla. And this, it will receive its afferents from the central group. As I told you, from the central group, it will drain into the apical group. It will receive its afferents from the central group. And... As a whole, this apical group, it will receive its afferents from the remaining all lymphatics and uh, it will also receive the lymph which is drained by the lymph nodes accompanying the cephalic vein. That is from the lateral half of the ha uh, hand, forearm and arm. After passing through the infraclavicular, they are finally draining into the apical group of lymph nodes. So, apical group of lymph nodes will drain the entire upper limb and upper half of the mammary gland. Okay. So, that is uh, how it receives its afferents. Now, what will happen to the efferents? From the apical group, the efferents will form the subclavian group. Subclavian group. Subclavian group. Now, this subclavian group, it will finally terminate at the junction between the subclavian vein and internal jugular vein. So, any lymph
lymphatic channel finally it has to drain into a vein so the subclavian group it will finally drain into the junction between the subclavian vein and the internal jugular vein so we have if we have the subclavian and the internal jugular the junction between the subclavian and the internal jugular the lymph from this apical will finally drain into the junction between the subclavian and internal jugular sometimes this can also drain into the thoracic duct and right lymphatic duct or even sometimes it will drain into the deep group of cervical lymph nodes so but otherwise generally it will drain into the junction between the subclavian and the internal jugular vein okay so that is about this uh, axillary group of lymph nodes but for the clinical importance so in carcinoma of the breast or mammary gland this axillary group of lymph nodes are the ones which are involved so for clinical purpose there is one more classification which is based on the location of these lymph nodes okay so we describe them as level 1 or low lying group of lymph nodes those lymph nodes which are present below the pectoralis minor pectoralis minor muscle are level 1 or low lying group of lymph nodes next you got the level 2 the lymphatics which are present behind or in line with this pectoralis minor muscle next you got the level 3 level 3 the lymphatics which are present above the pectoralis minor so they are given levels based on their location in relation to pectoralis minor muscle pectoralis minor this is the pectoralis minor so level 1 below the muscle level 2 in relation to the muscle level 3 above the muscle so there is one more group which are called as rotors nodes so these are the group of lymph nodes which are present in between the pectoralis minor and above that you have got the this is the part of the pectoralis major which is being shown here but you will have pectoralis major like this so group of lymph nodes which are present between pectoralis major and minor those are referred to as rotors nodes so this clinical classification is important in knowing about the prognosis in carcinoma breast patients so this is what is followed clinically okay so this is in total about the lymph nodes of the upper limb and the axillary lymph nodes thank you for watching